Do you believe in miracles? Well, after tonight, you just might. Fighters walking into the octagon as massive favorites carry a lot of expectations with them. In front of them are underdogs trying to prove themselves, and when they win instead, the world gets shocked. What's up, Fight Fans? And today we're counting down and reacting to the top five biggest upsets in MMA history. These are the fights that truly shocked the world, where the underdog overcame absolutely massive odds to pull off an unbelievable win. At number 5, we have Strickland vs Israel Adesanya. You might have expected to see this fight higher up on the list as it was clearly a big inspiration for revisiting this topic. But the truth is, Israel Adesanya's record and dominance won't quite measure up to some of the legacies ahead in order for us to have a ranking higher. And I think the biggest factor we have to mention is that Izzy has already lost a couple of times. Strickland, it would automatically Era. Well, that's just MMA math for you, isn't it? And the truth is, guys, Israel has now lost once every year for the last three years. The latter parts of his reign just don't stack up against the other massive greats on this video that we're about to mention. But by all means, let's not take away from the moment this was. Absolutely a massive upset that deserves all the respect in the world sent Strickland's way. I'm just trying not to get all hyperbolic about it. Recency bias. All that you know. And even if you want to argue that this was just an off night for Izzy, he was a massive favorite ahead of this fight. It's a reminder that you can never call a fight prediction to ever be 100% certain. And that's one of my absolute favorite things about this sport. It's incredible to see the underdog shock the world time and time again. Sean Strickland has oh produced gosh. one of the biggest upsets in UFC championship history. You know, I think I'm one of the best strikers in the world. I think sometimes I run my mouth so much that people forget that I know how to fight. At number four, we have BJ Penn versus Matt Hughes. It cannot be understated how wild this was. And because it was still in the latter part of the Dark Ages era of the UFC when no one was really watching anymore and just before the revival, that doesn't seem to be as appreciated as it should be. BJ Penn was already called the prodigy, but not due to his MMA career. He was struggling. It was his BJJ championships that got him that nickname. He failed to capture the lightweight title on two separate occasions by this point. One through a decision loss and the other through a draw. Compare that with Matt Hughes, the bigger man a weight class up, which already makes this transition hard enough for BJ. But Matt Hughes was legitimately the greatest champion the sport had seen to this point. Five title defenses. I mean, these kinds of records had never been achieved. Anderson Silva was new as a champion back then, for instance. Tito's reign was also five defenses, but he'd already lost by then. And otherwise, three title defenses were the closest record outside of this. So it's not unfair at all that Matt Hughes was viewed as the best fighter on the planet when this happened. But of course, BJ dominated Matt Hughes, clearly did not see himself having any chance of losing. First being hurt on the feet and then being dominated in his own specialty on the ground with grappling, it was just unreal to watch it back in 2004 and we've never seen an upset quite like it again. At number 3, we have Anderson Silva vs Chris Weidman. Looking back at my placement originally for this one, I think I may have ranked this a bit too high. While Anderson Silva's record speaks for itself and the many accomplishments that will take a very long time to ever be matched, let alone broken, especially now even further being cemented by recent developments with Izzy's reign again coming to an end, it just shows you how Silva's once-in-a-lifetime run actually was. But when you really look back then, Weidman was the right matchup in every category on paper. A wrestler who liked to chill in the sun and who could not only control him as we saw, but had the stand-up to back it up. And that second factor was what ended the legend's GOAT-level title reign in an incredible fashion. Another point on that level is many fighters actually picked Weidman going into that fight for those very reasons that they saw in Weidman's skill set. Not necessarily everyone picked him though, but many people gave him a realistic shot of winning. But make no mistake, that changes nothing about how shocking and unbelievable this was, which alone is enough to warrant a spot on the list. Paired with the fact that Anderson had shown no signs of slowing down, his confidence was definitely there too which cost him the fight in a lot of ways. Still though, Weidman had only 9 fights. The guy didn't even have 10 fights yet, it's crazy. Just unreal what he was able to do. And it's a night in this sport none of us will ever be able to forget. Anderson, oh my, he got hit! Looking to finish it! It is all over! Oh Chris Weidman goodness. is the UFC oh middleweight champion! My goodness! At number 2, we have Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso. As you've seen to this point, we've looked at a few fighters that are already considered GOAT level, 
and getting into the top 5, it really has to be a spectacular upset to get in here. This is one of the freshest ones on the list, but no less deserving because even though it's so recent, I think it's pretty easy to forget quickly in the world of you're only as good as your last fight, just how unexpected this was coming into this title fight. Valentina Shevchenko was pretty much the only woman's flyweight division champion. Sure there was Montano, but she won a replacement fight for the belt, and she wasn't even able to defend it and got stripped over a title fight missing weight, so there wasn't much outside of Valentina to speak of since the division began. By this time, we were talking 7 title defenses. She was tied at number 5 for all time most defenses with Aldo. And that was only 2 wins away from matching GSP. Many people thought she won either the second or even the first Nunes fight, which is unanimously considered the woman's goat. She did have some trouble against Santos, that should be mentioned, but as we've seen at Santos and even her most recent loss, she really is just that damn good and that much of a problem. So then contrast that with Alessa Grasso's record. The wins weren't anything to make you think she would do what she did. And just before moving up from strawweight, she literally only won half of her fights in the UFC going 3-3 three and three since joining. I remember discussing this with plenty of people and we were asking ourselves where is she better anywhere. Does she do it on the ground? No. Doesn't seem like Lynch? No. No one gave her a chance including myself, and it was a hard argument to go against based on what both had done in their careers. Turns out she devastatingly loses this rematch like really badly one-sided. You still know she had the perfect game plan going into the first fight. Winner by submission due to a rear naked choke and no! You will see undisputed flyweight champion of the world. Finally, at number 1, we have Holly Holm vs Ronda Rousey. Unlike some on this list with a rear view on this one, it's not nearly as shocking considering what we know now. Because she lost to a very well-rounded world champion boxer and kickboxer, of course she was going to lose to her. I mean, it feels obvious in hindsight. But that does not change the perception of the day and just how world-breaking this moment truly was. I mean, a future president in his first campaign was literally tweeting about this fight. It was all over the news worldwide. It happened in front of the UFC's largest attendance record in Australia. And in the build-up, many forget but Misha Tate was the one that was supposed to get the fight. Everyone who was expecting her to get a third fight when this suddenly got announced. And not to mention Holmes' career in the UFC was just not impressive with two barely scraping by type of performances. But considering that she won despite Ronda being the favorite is simply incredible. Beautiful! Can she Beautiful. She's hot! And there's a trouble! She's hot! Hey. Oh. Holly looking to finish! And there you have it folks, the 5 biggest, most jaw-dropping upsets we've ever witnessed in MMA history. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the like button and comment your favorite upsets. And subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. See you soon.